All right. Okay, so we are going to go over the bell ringer really quick. The bell ringer um, is mostly equations. So, first thing, going to subtract 6 from both sides. That is going to cancel out and give me 2x equals negative 2. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2 to cancel out my 2. That's going to give me x equals negative 1. Next one, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to cancel out that 3, giving me x equals 2. Number 3, I'm going to distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. This equals 56. We're going to add 12 to both sides to cancel that out because negative 12 plus 12 is 0. 56 plus 12 is 68 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2 to cancel the 2 out. And we get x equals 34. Cool. All right. Number 2. I know we've been having a little bit of a rough time with the fraction, so let's clear that business up. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. Get rid of that plus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And then we have our x over 10. Whenever you see a fraction, you should have a light bulb in your head that pops up and says, we're doing division. The only way to cancel out division is to do the opposite, and the opposite of division is multiplication. This is going to be on your quiz, so make sure you understand this, All right, or at least memorize how to do it. Number five, we've got to get common denominator. I'm going to multiply one-third by two, giving me two over six. I'm going to multiply four over two by three. That gives me twelve over six. Add them together, and I get 14 over 6. We want to write that as a mixed number. We will get 3, oh, no, lied, 2 and 2 6, which reduces to 2 and 1 third. I know that's a funky 2. Bear with me here. All right. Well, we have a power to a power. We multiply. So we're going to do 2 times 5. That gives us 10. 3 times 5 gives us 15. And 4 times 5 gives us 20. Leaving us with 2 to the 10th, x to the 15th, y to the 20th. I know that was super fast, but we have a lesson today and have to get through all of it. All right, learning targets. Go ahead and circle and underline. That means you need to pause so you can circle and underline. All right, thank you for resuming. So we're going to understand connections among proportional relationships, lines, and linear equations. Lots of vocab right there. We're going to graph proportional relationships, interpret the slope and the y-intercept of graphs, then we're going to examine linear relationships as graphs, as equations, and solve real-world problems. That is a lot of stuff, which just means that we're going to graph lines and understand how we graph lines. Don't get confused with all of the crazy language. Okay, so we're going back to Misty because for some reason our book really likes Misty. Um, Misty, if you remember, is the skier. She skis, or she wants to ski, and she's raising money to ski by, uh, like, doing chores, I think. I have to flash back and see that. So it says, remember that Missy had saved her money to buy passes to the ski lift at the High Ratio Mountain Ski Resort. And then we got a little picture here. All right, it says, daily lift ticket, $30. 10-day package, $80 upon purchase, $20 per day, up to 10 days. And unlimited season pass, $390. Suppose Misty purchases the 10-day ticket package. That costs $80 plus $20 per day. Complete the table below to determine the total cost of the lift tickets in the 10-day package for zero to through six days. Be sure to include the cost of $80. All right, pause and see if you can do this problem by yourself. upon purchase. That means when she buys it, she's automatically paying $80. So even though she hasn't skied on day zero, she's paying $80. Day one is going to be $100. And the reason it's $100 is because it's $80 for the first time she bought it, and then $20 for her first day. 
On her second day, we're going to go up another $20 because each day is $20. All right. Then we're going to go up $20 again. It's going to give us $140. $20 again and again and again until we get to day six. So let's explain how you know the data in this table is linear. So linear data means it's going to be a straight line. We learned last time that a straight line has a slope, and a slope has a constant rate, which means every time it every time it goes up, it's going to go up by the same amount. And if we look here, every time this goes up, we're going up by 20. Doesn't matter what place you start, it's going up by 20. And because it's going up the same amount each time, we can say that it is linear. All right, moving on. The data from the table on the given axes. Oh, I missed the first word. Plot the data from the table on the given axis. That's an important word because it tells us we need to put points on here. So the data from the table gives us the points we need. The first point is going to be 0, 80. So we're going to go to 0. We're going to go up 80 because our second number always tells us what we're going to do on our y-axis. Our first number tells us our x. And just in case we have slept if we learned y-axis and x-axis, they put the little y and x there. The next one, 1 and 100. So we're going to go to 1 and go up to 100. I'm already seeing a pattern. Next we're going to do 2 and 120. Okay, then 3 and 140. 5 and 160. Oh, Crayola, I messed up. 4 and 160, my bad. 5 and 180. And 6 and 200. That looks pretty linear to me. All right, then it says draw a line. I'm going to get fancy and use a different color. Whoop. There we go. Straight line. Determine the slope and the y-intercept of the line graphed in item 2. Explain how these values relate to Misty's situation. So, y-intercept. Intercept. It's kind of like in football. When someone intercepts a football, they grab onto it. So, y-intercept means the y-axis is grabbing onto our line, and it is grabbing onto our line right here. Okay, so because we only care about the y when we write the y-intercept, we just put y equals 80. We do not care about the x-axis at all. All we care about the y is because that's the line getting in our way, taking our spotlight and whatnot. All right, the slope. So if we remember, the slope is rise over run. And you should be able to pick any point on the line to find our slope. So I'm going to pick 140 for funding. All right, so 140 goes up 20, and then it goes over 1. Okay, so it goes up 20 over 1. So that means our slope is 20 over 1 or 20. I don't know if we've learned this yet, but a fancy letter for slope is M because a long, long time ago, a bunch of old, probably men, sat around and they were like, what should we call this thing we just made up? And they were like, mmm, pizza. Just kidding. They just decided to do M because, I don't know, sometimes you live back there. But M stands for slope and slope is fun. All right. Now, I bet we're going to write an equation because I see let D. Let D represent the number of days Misty plans to ski and let K represent Misty's total cost. Write an equation. Write an equation. That could be used to determine Missy's total cost if she bought a $10 package. Take a second and see if you can come up with this. All right, so if you remember, it went up $20 a day. All right, $20 a day. But before it went up $20 a day, we had to pay $80. And because we had to drop that $80, bucks, we have to tag it on there. All right, plus $80. And that's all going to equal the total cost. When it says it wants the total cost, what letter does it say? K. I don't know why they picked K. Say, C would have made more sense, but whatever they picked K, their K is. Number five. Compare and contrast the lines associated with the data for the daily lift tickets in item four, the lesson 11 one, and the data for the 10-day package in item two. Include the similarities and differences in the equation. A bunch of big words that say, hey, remember that table we made last time? We're going to look at that table, and we're going to look at this table, and we're going to compare them. So go ahead, look back to that table you made, and see if you have any comparisons or contrast. If you do not have that, then just try to remember. 
I am actually not going to fill in this for you because I want you to try to do it without me. So I look forward to seeing what you come up with when I come back to check your notes. All right, you are going to do letters. Uh, check your understanding. You're going to do all of it. And I'm going to write the answers up here for you to check. Actually, that is too nice. I'm not going to write the answers up here for you to check. I'm going to check it when I get back. So just try your best. Um, if you really want to check, I'm going to leave an answer key with the sub. You can raise your hand and ask if they'll check it for you. All right, well, number eight. Although $390 seems a little expensive, Missy considered the unlimited season pass. First, she compared the season pass to the daily lift tickets at $30 each. How many times would Missy have to go skiing before she would save money with the $390 season pass? All right, so there are many different ways you can do this. I'm going to use our equation since we took all that work in making an equation, we might as well use it, right? So our equation is K equals 20B plus 80. We want to know how many times she has to go for it to cost $390 because that will balance it out. So 390 is our cost we want equals 20B plus 80. Hmm, that looks familiar, right? We're going to solve an equation. So let's solve the equation. First, we're going to subtract 80 from both sides. Goodbye, 80. That gives me 310 equals 20B. We're going to divide both sides by 20. And Ms. Peacock can't think about what 310 divided by 20 is, so she's going to sew while she walks over to get a calculator. I think it's 155. Still stalling. Still stalling. And we have 15.5. So the thing is, you can't go 15.5 days. Can't do that. If you go up to a ticket office and you say, hey, I'd like a ticket for 0.5 days, they're going to look at you kind of silly. So we're going to actually round that up so it makes more sense, and we're going to say she has to go 16 days. All right. Complete the table below for the total cost of the unlimited season pass for zero through six days. All right. She doesn't go any days. She doesn't go any days. She is going to have 390. She's going to pay 390. She doesn't go any days. It doesn't matter. She paid for the season ticket. And she goes one day. Still 390. Two. 390. Still. Three. 390. I think you see where I'm going with this. Four is 390. Five is 390. And six is 390. Because once she pays that, she can go as many times as she wants. All right. It's like season tickets to a game. Letter C. Explain how you know the data in the table are linear. Well, it says... Uh, 390 all the time. We know that it's not changing by zero, but it doesn't change by zero every single time. And because it doesn't change by zero every single time, that's technically a constant rate of change. It does change by one, though, because, you know, this is one, one day, one day, one day. We do go up one day. So that gives us zero over one every single time if we were graphing this, and that would be a constant. Okay. What is the rate of change of the cost of the tickets with the unlimited season pass? All right, so rate of change, mean slope, the slope is zero over one, also known as zero dollars, because we like to label. Zero dollars per day. Look at all that labeling we just did. Whenever you label rate of change, you should have something like zero dollars per day or a zero cash per second, just something. All right, number nine. Next, Misty compared the price of an unlimited season pass to two 10-day packages that she would use for 20 days of skiing. Which package would she be the best buy? Why, just by your answer. I don't know about Misty, but she researches way more than I do before I purchase something. Go ahead and try answering number nine on your own, and I'll answer it. Okay, if we have two 10-day packages, that's going to be $560, okay? And the reason it is $560 is because a 10-day package is A20. Oh, Ms. Peacock just got confused. All right, she's back. The total cost 
of two tendon packages is going to be 560. We know this because we can plug 10 into our equation twice and then add it together. It would make sense to purchase season pass if she was going to ski 20 days. So basically, when she hits 20 days, she might as well just buy the pass because she's going to go over that $390. And you can find this all by plugging in the equation. It's okay if you're a little bit confused on number 9 because I'm a little bit confused too. Alright. Number 10. It wants to know if she does 6 days, what her daily cost is going to be for her season pass and which one she should choose. So, go ahead and fill out number 10 and I'm going to jot these answers up here for you to check the rest of. Alright. So, D, I'm going to put D for daily. Daily, she would do 180. 10 day would be 200. And SP is going to be 390. So, she should choose the daily. Eight's going to be 240. Ten day is going to be 240. Season pass is going to be 390. I hope you're putting your dollar signs because Miss Peacock's being a little bit of slacker here and not putting her dollar signs. You guys are all excellent, awesome students, so I'm sure you are putting your dollar signs. And when I come to check these, when I get back, I'm going to see beautiful dollar signs everywhere. All right, got a deal. So day eight, she should have picked, really, either one of these would make sense. Day 13, she should pick this one or this one. And then day 16, she should do 390. I really don't understand why you would ski that long, but I just personally don't like skiing. So if you like skiing, you can go do that. Okay, number 11, try your best to answer that. Any answer is going to be awesome. Just try a answer. Let's do... Go ahead and complete your check your understanding, 12 through 15. Um, when you are done with the check your understanding, feel free to ask the sub nicely by raising your hand quietly to check your answers. Then for your homework tonight, you are going to be doing the practices on 144 and 145. Try your best to get as much of it done. Uh, since you pretty much have the entire class to work on it, besides the time you're doing your exit ticket, I do expect you to have it done. If you don't, I'm not going to be happy, I'll say that. Make sure you say thank you to the sub for coming in today because she did not have he or she did not have to. And make sure you stay on task. You are going to have some have a quiz right after this. The quiz is on Canvas. You just have to hit next. You're only going to get one attempt on that quiz, so try your best. You will be able to go back and forth if you decide to change your answer on a question before. You cannot use your notes. You cannot use your buddy. You cannot use anything but your brain. All right? So go ahead and get started. Make sure you put your computer back in your slot. If you do not put your computer back in your slot, I'm going to be very sad. And your calculators. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can send me a message on Canvas. I'll also have a discussion module. So after the quiz, you can post any questions you have, and I will check those out. Have a good Friday.